Hey guys, it's Max. Welcome to yet another video. Sorry if that was a little bit too cheesy, but I am hyped and super excited to share this video with you guys. Now, this is another partnership with Bison Tech. They sponsor this video, and I did one in the past where I compared one of their custom high-end workstations that I spec'd out myself against an iMac Pro, and a lot of you guys enjoy that video, but I also had a good amount of comments saying, Max, you're comparing a Windows workstation against uh, a Mac OS system, an iMac Pro, and you're comparing in Premiere Pro, and Premiere Pro is the most popular editing program. Over half my audience uses it, but we want you to test it out against Final Cut. So there's only one way to do that correctly, and that is to make a Hackintosh. I haven't made one in a while, so I'm super excited to share this video with you guys. Now, it is important to know that Bison Tech does not build Hackintoshes. They build custom high-end workstation PCs. They allow you to select all your parts, everything that's going to fit your workflow. They're going to give you a sheet with a setup guide. They're going to give you all your performance, they, they stress test the systems, they give you all your benchmarks, they give you the CPU temps, how loud the system is, the wattage, a bunch of different things to make sure it's going to be set up, it's going to work perfectly so you can get it out of the box and just be able to use it. Now along with that, if you're going to spend the money to get a custom built workstation, it should have a great warranty. And with no additional costs, this comes with a lifetime support, three year labor, one year parts warranty included, and that could be upped in a couple different tiers if you want to make sure you're good to go for a long time. Now with all of that said, if you want a Hackintosh, I would suggest finding a guide on TonyMacX86.com. It's an amazing website. They have tons of guides for building Hackintoshes, a bunch of knowledgeable people to help you out if something goes wrong. And then when you have a guide, you select components that are going to match up. It's going to make it much more simple and easy to set up a Hackintosh. I will link the guide to the components that I chose for this system right here for those of you guys who are interested in the description below. So what are the components in the system and how much does it cost? Well, first off, I want to admire the case. Just like the last one, we have a really, really nice high-end case with solid, thick aluminum paneling here. I think this just pops off. Uh, it's beautiful. We have LED strips here. We have tempered glass on the side, panels that have hinges. It is really, really nice, and this just shows me that I definitely need to step up my case game. Now, as far as parts, I wanted to spec this thing out to be competitive with the iMac Pro to keep it fair and leave a big chunk of space for a nice display in your accessories. And I think there's more than enough room in the budget. Uh, so if you use the coupon code MAXYURI of 100, the price of the system, including the Thunderbolt 3 controller, uh, including you know having it pre-built, stress tested, shipped out to you with that warranty is $3,647. And I'll leave a link to an HDR 4K display that's around $700 mark that is really, really nice. Where it gets even more interesting is when you want to start upgrading some of the components from the base iMac and the system. So let's say if you want to go from 32 gigs of RAM to 64 with the iMac Pro, that costs you $800. With Bison Tech, it's $329. And let's say you want to upgrade to a 14 core CPU that's Hackintosh capable. Here, I think it's about $800, where Apple charges, I think, $1,600, basically double the price. And same thing with you know, if you want to do SSDs. So if you want a higher end, more powerful system, the price gap gets bigger and bigger. And of course, you can upgrade this yourself down the line uh, instead of doing it all at once. Whereas with the iMac Pro, you need to order it the way it is unless you're not scared to unglue the display. And along with that, we have Bluetooth and Wi-Fi that's compatible, so uh, your iMessage is going to work, and you're going to get very low temperatures because of the liquid cooling, no throttling. You're going to see the temperatures here in a sec. It is very impressive. All right, guys, so now for the moment that you've been waiting for, the performance. So let's start out with Geekbench 4, and here, both in the single core and in the multi-core, we have a slightly higher score with the Hackintosh system. That's just because it's clocked a little bit higher. Looking at Cinebench R15, we get somewhere around 8% higher CPU score with the Hackintosh, which makes sense. Same eight cores, just a higher clock speed. But what's even more interesting is how low the thermals are with that water cooling. Under load, and I ran this test about five times back to back, the highest I saw ever was 55 degrees Celsius. And now that is very, very low. Now with the iMac Pro, of course, it has two fans. It prioritizes being quiet. And under long extended loads, it actually is louder than the liquid cooling, but Apple likes to keep their systems quiet. So uh, the iMac actually runs consistently over 90 degrees Celsius with a little bit of thermal throttling for long projects. 
Now that is a huge difference in temperatures. And if we look at idle temperatures, this thing runs at like 22, 23 degrees Celsius idling, which is crazy where the iMac is I know, somewhere in the 40s, 50s, if you don't do anything. And of course the temps shoot up really, really quickly uh, because they try to keep the fans off. And as far as actual like noise levels, it's right behind me right now. And I hear a very slight buzz, and I don't think it's from the fans, it's probably from the water pump. And it's right here on the table. If it's under your desk, you won't hear it. And it stays very near silent pretty much all of the time uh, because of the liquid cooling. Now jumping into Final Cut, starting out with Bruce X, which mainly tests the graphics, we get about 20% better performance with the Hackintosh because of the better graphics card. And when we stabilize a 20 second 4K clip, we also get about 20% faster speeds, five and a half seconds versus six and a half seconds. Now this is already incredibly fast. You click the button, you wait a few seconds and it's done. So you're not gonna notice that much of a difference unless you're trying to stabilize really, really long clips, which most people don't do. But this just shows the difference in the graphics performance. Now let's jump into a five minute 4K project with two LUTs and film grain applied. And this is where Hackintoshes start falling behind but not this Hackintosh. So typically with the Hackintosh, you're gonna enable a graphics card and you're gonna disable the built-in integrated graphics. So you're no longer using that QuickSync chip, which really speeds up your renders and exports. Now the iMac Pro also does not have QuickSync because it's using a workstation uh, CPU. With that said, the iMac is really well optimized now. It used to be much slower, slower than even like a regular 5K iMac, but they've made optimizations and they're utilizing the Vega graphics much more now to speed up those exports. Now I was honestly worried to see if the Hackintosh is gonna take much longer, if it can't utilize it and it's just gonna take much longer for your actual exports, not the timeline performance, the editing performance, but the renders. Now this is where I was really happy after testing it out. The Hackintosh is actually faster than the iMac Pro. So thank you Apple for updating your software since the launch of the iMac Pro, making it much faster and utilizing all of the hardware built into the Vega graphics. Because now if we throw a Vega graphics card into a Hackintosh, we can reap all of those same benefits. Now I had a similar concern, but regards to playback of 10-bit H.265 files, is it gonna be able to use the hardware chips that is native and like the iMac Pro does and play that back smoothly? And the answer is yes. When we're playing back a 10-bit HEVC uh, files 4K, either 24 or 60 frames per second, the CPU usage is actually lower than the iMac. It's around two to 5% CPU usage perfect playback even with multiple different LUTs and color corrections. So that's another relief. Now exporting a five minute H.265 8 bit 4K project to H.264, the Hackintosh is once again faster with a little bit bigger difference this time. You may have noticed that I was exporting that to H.264, not H.265 like I did with a couple previous tests. And this is where we have one downside. So with the Hackintosh, there's one thing that we're missing that the iMac Pro has, and that is that T2 chip. Now, when I was reviewing the iMac Pro and comparing it, I really couldn't tell what Apple is using to export the files. They have multiple different decoding and encoding hardware solutions. They have the graphics card, the CPU can do some stuff. And we also have that T2 chip. And now I have the answer. If you're exporting H.265 that is 8-bit, it's using the T2 chip, which the Hackintosh doesn't have. So in this case, when you try to export 8-bit H.265, it just doesn't let you. So your only option is 10-bit. Now, personally, I don't really export to 8-bit H.265. Let me know if you do in the comment section below. That should give you some file size savings. Uh, but with my systems, I just use the QuickSync chip and do H.264. If you're somebody that does, let me know in the comment section below. Typically, if I'm going out to HEVC or H.265, it's for 10-bit for HDR. And in this case, both systems are practically the same. Neither of them use hardware decoding because we don't really have that capability right now. So it does take much longer when you're doing 10 10-bit footage, but that's kind of a uh, downside right now of trying to do HDR so early in the game. And hopefully when we do get hardware encoding capability, it will be inside of the graphics card, not the T2 chip. Now it may be a given, but I have to mention that the timeline performance, the editing experience, the smoothness, whatever you want to call it, playback is flawless with both of these systems. They're both high-end computers, you have nice components, and you're pairing it with Final Cut, it better work really, really well, and it is fantastic. No glitches, nothing, it's just super, super smooth. Where it gets a little bit more interesting is when you start going to the big boy codecs like Canon Cinema Raw Lite from the C200, 
and red footage. Now the CPUs in here are very similar, we just have slightly better performance in the Hackintosh, and graphics cards are also similar, we just have a higher end one, and the results are really good. I know multiple people, I think like four to five, that actually switch from Windows computers to iMac Pros to edit C200 footage because it's just so much smoother. Even if you're not using Final Cut, even in Premiere Pro, the playback performance is much better, much smoother. That's probably because of Apple's Metal API and that's what Final Cut is using. Uh, and so here with the Hackintosh, I was wondering how it would work and man, is it buttery smooth. Now uh, in Final Cut, the iMac Pro does a really good job up to about one LUT in color correction on the raw footage at full resolution. And that really kind of maxes out that Vega 56 graphics card. So you could still play back at 60 frames per second with those effects added uh, and it exports pretty quickly. But because with the Hackintosh, we have the Vega 64 graphics card, it can also handle 60 frames per second, but it has more headroom, about 30 to 40% of GPU performance remaining. Whereas uh, the iMac Pro here is basically maxed out as far as the GPU. And then we can also see this when we export our file that the Hackintosh is about 25% faster. And now lastly, we have 4.5K Red Raw. And as you can see, the rendering performance is basically the same. And the timeline performance is also very similar. And that is because the Red Raw really hits both of these CPUs and these CPUs are both eight cores. So if you edit red footage, I would suggest, especially with the Bison where it doesn't cost as much to upgrade your CPU like it does with the iMac Pro, uh, go for a higher end CPU. I'd probably suggest the 14 core and that's gonna get you better performance. But for Red, it's very similar. All right guys, so let's wrap up this video. Overall, I just wanna say that I'm very impressed with the Bison Tech uh, Systems, their configurator guide. Uh, I love, love, love the cases. It's beautiful, it looks nice, it's durable. Kind of reminds me of you know, a Mac Pro with all of that aluminum. Of course, if you install Mac OS and you choose the right hardware, and that part of it's very important to make sure that you're choosing hardware that is compatible, um, it makes it just much easier. And overall, uh, I haven't done a Hackintosh in a while. Um, I'm very happy with it. We don't have the 8 bit H.265 codec available because it tries to find the T2 chip, which is not there. But other than that, I am very impressed with the Hackintosh. Uh, the last one I did was a couple years ago, and then you'd get really great timeline performance as far as editing, but the renders and encodings would take much longer uh, because you would not have quick sync. And now with these new graphics cards, because the software is natively utilizing the encoding hardware in there, the encoding times are very comparable and even faster than using an iMac Pro. So should you go with the Hackintosh or should you go with an iMac Pro? Uh, well, I mean, there's pluses and minuses of both. Of course, if you want Mac OS, this is an all-in-one system, but you have downside as far as the temps inside the system. And it probably the bigger one is the cost and not being able to upgrade your hardware with a custom PC like this from Bison Tech. You can select your own parts in the configurator, get exactly what you need. And of course, down the line, uh, you can upgrade that as well. And then of course, you can get a lower price and choose the monitor that you want or get two matching monitors, which is one area people are frustrated with uh, the IMAX is if you put some other kind of monitor next to it, doesn't match up as well, doesn't look good, you know, stuff like that. So overall guys, I'm glad I got to do this video. I think the Hackintosh bug has bit me once more. Thank you to Bison Tech for working with me and partnering with this video uh, that I got to select all my configuration and get the system uh, sent out. Once again, there's links in the description to the exact system that I used. Make sure you guys use that coupon code if you guys want to save $100 off and uh, you guys can just check the links in the description. I'll have a link to Tony Mac X86. Thank you for those guys for their awesome guides and the community that they built around Hackintoshes. Thank you guys for watching as well. Make sure you guys are subscribed and have those notifications enabled. This has been Max and I'll see you in the next video.